It's summertime and the weather is fine here in the US, and at least in my life, the beer seems to be flowing really freely as I try to beat the heat with a nice cold beer. It's no secret that beer is a particularly refreshing beverage, and many people enjoy a few more beers than normal during the summer while on vacation at the beach or the lake. As a guy who sits around and is almost constantly thinking about the beer industry, the slightest seasonal variation in the nature of beer got this nerd thinking, how much does beer production truly fluctuate throughout the year? Hey this is Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and as beer tourism becomes more and more popular, many brewers, especially craft brewers, are seeing some pretty big fluctuations in demand throughout the year. But what causes such demand and how much does that move the needle on beer production on the national scale? We're going to explore all this and more in today's episode of Beer by the Numbers. Let's dive into it. I was looking through beer news a couple weeks back when I came across an article from the Portland Press Herald out of Maine talking about how that state's breweries have an absolutely insane summer rush of thirsty beer lovers. Back in April or May, if you visited Rising Tide Brewery in Portland, Maine, you would have seen a tap room with only a dozen people or so in it, but you would have seen a team of brewers working busily to operate a canning line to pump out as much beer as possible. They certainly weren't cranking out all that beer for those in the tap room, rather they were preparing for their busy season which was right around the corner. July is the busiest beer production month according to data provided by the state breweries, and they pumped out more than 115% more beer in July than they did of February 2017. But no one can beat the rush that Rising Tide Brewing experiences, which made more than 243% more beer in July than in February last year. Co-owner Nathan Sandburn said, We'll see quadruple the number of people coming through here in that period, and related to that are all the restaurant accounts up and down the coast that are closed during the winter, but are very active during the summer. So it seems that tourism, specifically tourists that have a big thirst for craft beer, are behind this major increase in demand in the state of Maine. Although beer-related tourism is rising sharply throughout the United States, it hasn't exactly had the same impact nationwide as it has in Maine. I wanted to dig into how demand shifts throughout the year based on the season to see if beer production in the US swings wildly like it does in Maine, or if scaling things up rounds the data out and makes Maine a bit of an outlier. Now, if you have followed me for a while, you'll remember my video on the history of beer taxes. And in that video, you'd know that governments really love to tax in-demand products like beer. Now, regardless of how you may feel about beer taxes, it does help us get some great insight into how much beer is produced in the US as an excise tax is levied for every beer sold by a brewer. Using the data collected by the alcohol, tobacco, Tax and Trade Bureau, we have a great data set to build a quick model off of to see beer production over time. Over on the TTB's website, they have all sorts of handy reports that give a month by month breakdown of beer production in the entire United States as reported to them. 2017 is the most recent complete data set we have, so I'll be using that today in many models as well as the data from 2016 for some comparison. I went through all these PDF files and created a table in Excel and then made a few quick graphs I want to show you as they have some really interesting insights. First, if we look at beer production by month, we see that in both 2016 and 2017, production peaked in June with over 18 million barrels and slowly fell off to a low of 12 to 14 million barrels in November and December. For reference, 14 million barrels represents about 434 million gallons of beer or 2.3 billion 12 ounce bottles each and every month, so these numbers are certainly nothing to sneeze at. Still, the data shows that across the US, beer as a whole production varies only by about 16 to 20 percent from November till June, certainly nothing close to the 115 percent growth Maine experiences each year. Overall, beer production remains pretty consistent in the US, 
although 2017's appears to show a bit slight decline in overall volume versus 2016. So I guess I've answered my question and Maine is in fact a crazy summer tourism outlier. But while I was going through all these PDFs, I realized they had other cool data sets that I wanted to play around with. The TTB listed below the production numbers all the raw materials used to create that beer in 2016, and I couldn't help myself but put it into a graph to see how demand for certain materials shifted throughout the year. The first thing I looked at was grain usage, which was actually fairly consistent month to month, but had a few outliers. As you can see, every three months there was a large spike in the amount of grain used. I racked my brain trying to explain this trend when I realized that each of these spikes in usage corresponds perfectly with a calendar quarter close. And who are calendar quarters especially important to? Why large publicly traded brewing corporations of course. Because I have a background in corporate finance, I know for a fact that many large companies will offer their customers special discounts at the end of a quarter to ensure they get their revenue numbers up so they can look really good reporting their results to investors. And because beer tax is recorded when the beer is sold rather than exactly when it's produced, it's no wonder we see a quarterly spike in grain usage as the large brewers report their quarter end sales. Gotta look good for those investors even though it might throw off our numbers a bit. Then I moved on to hops usage, which was pretty consistent throughout the year. Well, except for December, in which brewers reported seven times more hops being used than most other months throughout the year. Now why on earth would that be? Well, I think part of the issue is that small and independent brewers love to brew some really hoppy IPAs. But as smaller brewers, they only need to report their sales for taxes quarterly or sometimes even annually. It's expected that one would see a big spike in the hop usage reported in December, even though these breweries may have used them year round because they have to file all their reports in December. Though if you have another idea as to why this might be, let me know in the comments below. Finally, they had data on sugar adjuncts in beer by month too. This one was interesting, being pretty consistent, but then doubling in March and April. Now I really tried to think of an explanation here, but I haven't really been able to come up with a great answer. So let me know what you think might be causing this spike in sugar adjuncts in the comments section below. So overall in the US, beer production is pretty consistent, peaking in June or July and bottoming out in January or February. US drinkers may like their beer tourism but they don't seem to slow down much during the winter either. By the way, if you want to stay up to date on the latest beer news, head over to the Beer by the Numbers Facebook page using the link in the description below. Once again, this has been Ryan with Beer by the Numbers, and I'll see you next week with some more consistent beer content.